Let's break this vector into components. We're still using these axes. Let's break this overall vector into components. Well, uh, we might as well assume this is parallel to the x-axis. It looks like it's parallel, and if we don't assume that these are parallel, we can't solve the problem. So we should assume that this vector is parallel to our x-axis. Um, and that means that it only has an x component. Um, since this is parallel, or actually anti-parallel to the x-axis, there is no y component. Um, it's only x component. So the vector has a length of 5, and that means that the x component has a length of 5, because there's nothing but an x component in this vector. It's completely parallel, or rather anti-parallel to the x-axis. There is no y component. We should also work out uh, a signed component for that. Well, the x-axis is pointing down and to the left, but the vector was pointing up and to the right. So while the magnitude of the overall vector is 5, the magnitude of the overall vector is 5, um, and that's also the magnitude of the x component, the x component has a sign of negative 5. Remember that we usually uh, don't think of putting signs on the overall vector. Um, but we're certainly going to put a sign on uh, the component here. Any component needs a sign unless you're specifically talking about the dot, which is the magnitude. Okay, so we can say that the x component of n is negative 5 in this case. I hope you can see why I'm saying there's no y component, because this is completely parallel to the x-axis, or anti-parallel. So it only has an x component. So we could also say that the y components are zero. It doesn't matter whether you focus on their magnitude or their sign component, it's zero either way. Of course, zero is the one number we would never put a sign on. Zero doesn't really have a sign. What we've been working on recently is breaking vectors into components when the axes are not horizontal or vertical. We've been working with non-horizontal and non-vertical axes and breaking things into components. Uh, but you have to remember that sometimes there's a vector that kind of doesn't have to be broken into components because it's already parallel to one of the axes, or anti-parallel. If you're already parallel to one of the axes, then you only have one component. But we can still write that out formally by saying that your entire length represents only one component, and you still have to figure out what the right sign is for that component. And for the other component, we can just say that it's zero. Let's break this vector into components. Well, we should assume that this is parallel to the y-axis, because otherwise there's no way to solve the problem. So these look parallel. We'll assume that this vector is parallel to the y-axis. That means it doesn't have an x component. If you're parallel to one of the axes, um, then you only have one component. When a vector is parallel or anti-parallel to one of the axes, it only has one component. You might want to put that in your notes, although it should be kind of common sense. If a vector is parallel or anti-parallel to one of the axes, it only has one component. It only has a component in the axis that it's parallel to. Uh, so this only has a y component. As usual, we'll start with a magnitude. Clearly, the magnitude of the y component is 3. The entire overall vector, the entire length of the vector, represents the y component with a length of 3. But we're not done until we figure out the sign component. Well, our y-axis was pointing up and to the left, and the overall vector is pointing up and to the left. So the y component is positive 3. So now we've broken this vector into components. There's no x component, and the y component is positive 3. If there's anybody out here, out there, who wrote this as their answer, then you got the problem wrong. This is not a correct answer, um, because um, a signed component has to have a sign. Um, it's not correct to say that the signed component is 3. The signed component is positive 3. We should indicate the signs in front of both positive and negative signed components. So this would be a poor answer. Uh, it's OK to leave out the sign when you're just focusing on the magnitude, indicated by the dot. But when you go on to give your final answer, you're doing the signed component and should indicate the sign for either a positive or a negative component.
Let's break this vector into components. This vector looks like it's parallel to the x-axis, so it has no y component. There's no y component because it's completely parallel to the x-axis. The entire length of the vector represents the magnitude of the x component. And now let's work out the sign of the x component. Well, the x-axis positive direction is down into the right, and this vector is pointing down into the right. So here's the positive x component, positive 4. If you left out the positive sign, then you didn't do a good job on this problem. When you're indicating a component, a signed component, you should indicate the sign, not just the magnitude. 